sun <coughs> is the harbinger of life on earth. Now, India is getting ready for its space-based solar observatory. Aditya satellite is ready to go into orbit. To explain the details of Aditya and the mysteries of the sun, I have with me Professor Somak Ray Chaudhary. Namaskar. Sir. Namaskar. Professor Somak is an astrophysicist deeply involved with the Aditya mission and the Chandrayaan mission and vice chancellor of the Ashoka University. Uh, thanks a lot for giving us time, Thank Professor uh, Somak. What is the Aditya satellite and why is India sending Aditya up? So the Aditya satellite is a satellite that will study the sun 24 hours, 7 days a week. It is going to be at a point called the Lagrangian first point between the earth and the sun. And so it doesn't orbit the sun, orbit the earth. Uh, it observes the sun the whole time. Uh, and it's going 1.5 million kilometers away from the earth to look at the sun. So it's a challenging mission for, for India. So is it a robotic satellite? Well, it's completely automated, of course, and uh, it has quite a lot of robotic elements on it because it senses when the sun is going to be active and then it turns on some of the cameras and detectors if the sun is active. So it has got intelligence on board, uh, but it's got seven instruments, two major instruments, to look at both the sun itself for the first time, uh, two instruments that will look at the sun itself and its corona the corona being the very large volume around the sun which is full of charged particles and it's very hot. Now is this satellite made in India or uh, uh, did we import anything? The, the satellite is entirely made in India and it's made in two um, uh, institutes, uh, the Indian Institute of Astrophysics in Bangalore and the Inter-University Center uh, for Astronomy Astrophysics in Pune where I used to be director till last year uh, and, and these are the two major instruments, one to study the corona and want to study the sun itself. It's an ultraviolet camera. And there are five other instruments that are made in Bangalore, in Ahmedabad, the Physical Research Laboratory, and in Tiruvananthapura. So these are um, uh, entirely India made seven instruments to study the sun in all its aspects. Now, this particular satellite, when it goes towards the sun, is it going to go all the way to the sun? Sun is 150 million kilometers away. away. That's right. Yeah. And it's very so this hard. is this is going only one percent of that distance. One point five million. One point five million kilometers away. But there is a point. There are uh, five points in the sun Earth system where, if you put a satellite, it is going to be parked. It is it the forces on it due to the Earth and the sun and the rotation. They all balance out. These are called the Grandian points. And because it is going um, away from the Earth. It is not going to be eclipsed by the Earth as it, uh, as it moves around that Lagrangian point and so it can observe the sun the entire time. That's the idea. So it will have a continuous view of the continuous sun? Continuous view of the sun, yes. And once it reaches there, that so, means Aditya never sleeps? Aditya never sleeps. And uh, But does the sun sleep? The sun doesn't. So In fact, we... <laughs> that's right. The sun sets because of the Earth's turning. Yes. The sun is always there. So we need to study the sun. The, the, the whole time and we can't do it from any point of the earth because of course the night and day uh, changes. So this is why we need to go to space. There are other reasons why we need to go to space because you know the sun in visual light, in the light that we see is not that active. You see sunspots but you don't see much change in the sun and this satellite is going to study the changes in the sun. So you see the changes in the sun in the high energy part of the spectrum which is ultraviolet and x-rays. And those things don't come through our atmosphere. This is why we have to send a satellite outside the atmosphere to study the ultraviolet. So the, the ultraviolet camera that is built by Ayuka is going to look at the sun itself, the surface of the sun, which you know is about 6,000 degrees. Um, and then uh, on the surface of the sun, you get indications of activity. The sun has a very strong magnetic field on its surface. And so as a result, there are magnetic storms. And in these magnetic storms, some of them can be as large as the Earth. They're very big. This you don't see in the visual light. You see them in the ultraviolet and X-ray. In these so storms... How, how, are there unresolved scientific questions on the sun? 
I can see the sun just now. I can't oh, look absolutely. at it directly. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't understand the sun much at all. In fact, the sun and the earth formed at the same time four, four and a half billion years ago. We know that. And so we are a part of the sun. But uh, the earth is a, is a cold planet. The sun produces energy. It produces all our energy, as you said, harbinger of life. And, but then, in, in the process of produ production of this energy, which happens in the core of the sun, as the energy comes out to the sun, uh, to the surface, and uh, the surface is then a boiling uh, a surface of plasma, um, we don't understand all the processes that happen on the surface. You know, I mean, the corona, which I was talking about, which is the, the, the big volume of charged particles around the sun, it was found 150 years ago that there are some unknown spectral lines when the first spectrum was, was, uh, was found of the sun. The, for example, the, um, there was a green line that was found in the 1860s, which we didn't know what it was. <coughs> later on, much, much later on, 60, 70 years later, people identified that as iron. The sun has iron line where it, it is in a state, it is an ionized state in which all half the electrons have been removed. It's a very ionized state. This can only happen at a temperature of 2 million degrees. Wow. So we now know that the surface is 5,500 degrees, whereas the, the corona is 2 million degrees. So this is a mystery. How did the corona get heated? The coronal heating is one of the major puzzles so Aditya is going to. So, so there is a lot of mystery about the sun. A Not lot everything. of mystery. We don't know much about the sun, uh, the interior. We are trying to figure out um, the, what is the interior in the interior of the sun. We don't know how the magnetic field of the sun varies. And as a result, these dramatic storms happen. And we also know how the corona is generated, what is in the corona, and what is the connection between the surface of the sun and the corona. Now, it is said, and it's a very day man's question, occasionally the sun gets very angry. What, what happens when the sun gets angry? Right now the sun looks benign. The, the, sun, the sun as a whole doesn't get angry, but what happens is that on the surface of the sun, as I said, there are intense magnetic storms going on. They erupt, and that's what uh, the anger means. And when it erupts, and these magnetic storms can be very large, when they erupt, uh, a large number of very, very high energy particles and radiation can come out. And many of them come towards the Earth and they come and hit the Earth's atmosphere. And so the sun's anger can be felt on the Earth many times. Uh, it happens, uh, it, the sun gets active on an 11-year cycle. Uh, there are some times in that 11-year cycle when the sun is very active, you can have these episodes of anger uh, uh, many times a day. And when the sun is quiet during that cycle, then you can go many days without any of these episodes. Now, when these episodes happen, the charged particles that go out of the sun can go and hit any other um, uh, entity in the solar system. When they come towards the Earth and hits the atmosphere, it affects the Earth's atmosphere in so very profound way. Absolutely. It affects our satellite because the satellites are just outside the atmosphere. And uh, in the uh, upper atmosphere, we have other um, uh, flying objects that that uh, um, uh, uh, we that hold our um, uh, communication systems together. The satellites, you know, that most of our satellites are either they control the GPS, which is uh, or or our internet com communication, our phone communication, as well as they are looking at the the Earth. The very expensive satellites looking at the Earth, doing remote sensing, trying to find out what's happening on the Earth. So all this is affected as these charged particles come. They also create some beautiful things like the aurora. The aurora yeah, is created okay, by, yeah. the, by okay. these charged particles that they come to the earth and they go towards the poles because of the earth's magnetic field. So, so in a way, Aditya is a scientific mission but will also help protect India's 50 plus satellites worth 50,000 crores which look down not just on earth giving us whatever you said but That's also right. breed down our neighbors. So, so it's, so Aditya is going to be a protector of sorts? Aditya is going to help protect not just India's 50,000 crore satellites, but it is going to protect all the satellites of the Earth. We use our neighbors, uh, we help all the, all the people now, of course, not just countries, but private entities are also sending up satellites, which are also vulnerable to these, uh, to these uh, coronal mass ejections, as they are called, the anger of the sun.
and, and uh, uh, everybody is going to be benefited because not only will Aditya predict these uh, um, coronal mass ejections and then alert everybody so satellites can shut down their power etc so that they are not affected but it will also help us understand how these things happen and in the future we might not need uh, a warning system out there we might be able to just looking at the sun from the earth we can uh, uh, figure out how uh, this uh, this large space weather as it is called we can predict uh, a phenomenon in the space weather from just earth based observations excited about aditya mission i'm going very on. excited i'm going there for the launch and i will be there and i'm extremely excited uh, i'm i'm absolutely certain this is going to happen just after chandrayaan what a wonderful success we had with chandrayaan 3 Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm absolutely certain this launch will be very successful. And then, of course, India has never sent anything to a Lagrangian point. So that is another at the other end, landing not on a surface like the moon, but at this point in space where it's going to be parked, a parking space in, uh, in, in space, which I'm, I'm very excited about. Thanks a lot for speaking to us, uh, Professor Somak. Thank you. So that was Professor Somak telling us how excited he is about the Aditya satellite. coming close on the heels of the successful soft landing on the moon the aditya mission is exciting not only indians but eyes are there from across the world and coming so close to the big g20 summit if all goes well the moon walk to the sun dance it could be a glorious time for india like camera person adam siddiqui and the sun above me palav bagla for ndtv